Welcome to CardioCast for Friday, December 6th. I'm Dr. Jim DeWire. This week, lowering cardiovascular event risk with Vasepa is cost-effective. DAPA HF analyses showed dapagliflozin benefits heart failure patients regardless of age. An old drug learns new tricks in MI patients and cardiac arrests rise with air pollution levels. But first, thanks to all of you who've helped us make this podcast better by taking our short listener survey. We encourage those of you who haven't to complete the survey by following the link in the show notes. And now the news. Neither age nor baseline health status affected the substantial benefits dapagliflozin delivered for patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. The practice-changing DAPA-HF trial showed the diabetes drug was safe and effective at improving outcomes in heart failure patients, regardless of whether they also had type 2 diabetes. Researchers presented two post hoc analyses at the AHA scientific sessions. In the first, University of Glasgow investigators found that even the most elderly enrolled patients, those 75 years and older, had a similar cut in mortality and acute heart failure exacerbations compared with younger patients. They stress the importance of these findings because many patients with heart failure are much older than those in clinical trials. In an analysis by researchers at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, patients with severe heart failure symptoms at baseline received about as much benefit from dapagliflozin as did patients with mild baseline symptoms. Those researchers pointed out that to many patients, how they feel matters as much, if not more, than how long they live. They analyzed the changes in quality of life in DAPA-HF and found significant improvements in quality of life in treated patients. An analysis of the REDUCA trial shows that icosapentethyl is cost-effective and the medication reduces cardiovascular events by 30%. Dr. William S. Weintraub presented the results at the American Heart Association scientific sessions. He said the results show that icosapentethyl, also called Vasepa, saves 70% in costs, demonstrating that it is a dominant strategy. It's offering better outcomes at a lower cost. Reduce it randomized more than 8,000 patients with high triglyceride levels to either 4 grams of icosapentethyl daily or placebo. Trial results show the treatment group had a relative risk reduction of 25% of first cardiovascular events and a 30% reduction for total events. The cost-effectiveness analysis showed that almost all of the estimates fell below a threshold called willingness to pay of $50,000 per quality-adjusted life year gained, Dr. Weintraub said. Last month, the Food and Drug Administration Advisory Panel unanimously recommended approval of icosapentethyl, which is derived from fish oil, for a new indication for reducing cardiovascular event risk. It was approved in 2012 for treatment of triglyceride levels of at least 500 milligrams per deciliter. We'll be right back after this message. A relatively affordable gout drug may deliver what a pricey biologic agent has already demonstrated, protection against cardiovascular events after a heart attack. The Colcott study included more than 4,700 post-MI patients. Researchers at the Montreal Heart Institute presented the study's findings at the American Heart Association scientific sessions. The oral anti-inflammatory colchicine significantly cut cardiovascular disease events by 23% compared with placebo. Colchicine was combined with a post-MI regimen of aspirin, a second antiplatelet drug, a statin, and in many patients, a beta-blocking drug. Colchicine's performance appears to replicate that of a relatively expensive monoclonal antibody, canukinumab. In the earlier Cantos trial, a canukinumab injection every three months led to a 15% drop in cardiovascular event incidence compared with placebo. (music) 
out-of-hospital cardiac arrests spike with higher daily counts of emissions-related particulate matter. And those high counts take a particularly high toll on men and people older than age 75. That's according to a nationwide Japanese study presented at the American Heart Association scientific sessions. The particulates are a key contributor to urban smog, and researchers at Kawasaki Medical School in Kurashiki, Japan, say short-term exposure to them is a potential trigger for out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. The investigators examined the link between cardiac arrest incidence and particulate matter that measures 2.5 micrometers in average diameter, or PM2.5. PM2.5 is about 1 40th the diameter of a human hair. Across Japan, the average daily concentration for PM2.5 was 14 micrograms per cubic meter. A 10 microgram per cubic meter increase was linked with a 1.6% increase in out-of-hospital cardiac arrests. PM2.5 levels also seem to influence outcomes depending on the origin of the cardiac arrest. Patients with V-fib, pulseless VTAC, and pulseless electrical activity had better outcomes than did those with asystole, and greater PM2.5 levels were linked with lower rates of restoration of spontaneous circulation, one-month survival, and one-month survival with minimal neurological impairment. You can find these stories and more by visiting www.mdedge.com slash cardiology or by clicking the links in the podcast notes. This week's contributors include Richard Kirkner and Mitchell Zoller. And CardioCast, Cardiology News, and MD Edge Cardiology are edited by Katherine Hackett. Remember, you can find CardioCast via Amazon Alexa, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like what you hear, please leave us a rating or review. And be sure to take our short listener survey. For MD Edge, I'm Dr. Jim DeWire.